That's right. Verse 23. They exchanged the glory of an incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. What religion is that? Oh, how about um, environmentalism, where you worship what? The creation, not the Creator? Wow. Yeah, this is man at his... You say, isn't this man at his highest? He's worshiping. No, this man at his lowest. False religion is man in the pit. He's gone so far down, he's created the fantasy of false religion. Religion is not man at his highest, it is man at his lowest. The ultimate insanity is to worship any other than the true God, right? And so we see what happens in a society when God turns them over and we see why He turns them over. And that was just a quick overview. So we look at our nation, our hearts are broken, the mind is depraved, they think they're smart, they're morons, they can't get to the truth, the mind is completely gone, they invent bizarre religions, they become religious. Today they like to talk about being spiritual, right? I'm very religious. I'm very spiritual. What in the world does that mean? What does that mean? It's as if you can invent your own worship and your own religion. That's man at his lowest. That's all the way at the bottom, total, complete rejection of the true God and the true faith. That's where we are. Now the question is, how do we pray? Turn to Psalm 81. Psalm 81, and I I want the Holy Spirit to give you direction here as we think about this. See if this doesn't sound familiar. Verse 11, Psalm 81, verse 11, but my people did not listen to my voice or my word. Israel did not obey me. So, verse 12, I what? Gave him up. Wow. If he would do that with Israel, a covenant people, what do you think is going on in America? We're not a covenant people. So I gave him over to the stubbornness of their own heart to walk in their own devices. I let him go. I let him go to the consequences of their choices. This is God. He's abandoned them. But look at verse 13, and here's the heart of God that I think we have to grasp in America in this hour. Here's God, His words, oh, that my people would do what? Yeah, there it is. But they listen to me, listen to me. That that Israel would walk in my ways. Right there, folks, is your mandate to pray. What do you have to pray for? You have to pray for the Word of the living God to be proclaimed across this nation. And if it's not being proclaimed in churches, it's not going to be proclaimed anywhere else. This is not a time for weak men in weak ministries preaching weak messages. This is a time to call on God to raise up a generation of passionate, faithful, gracious, loving preachers of the Word so that a nation can listen to God. It's the answer. You think God might react? He said, I love this, verse 14. I would quickly, you like that word? Is that a good word? I don't get the picture God's dragging His heels here. 
I would quickly subdue their enemies. I would turn my hand against their adversaries. And it would be so great that even the people who hate me would pretend to obey me. <laughs> and then I love this. Uh, I love verse 16. And I would feed you with the finest of the wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. That's metaphoric. I would just, just drown you in blessing. God only wants one thing out of a nation. Listen and believe this book. I really get grieved even when I hear evangelical people in the media and the public eye kind of equivocating about the clarity of the gospel. It's all we've got about the clarity of what Scripture says. Your prayer and mine has to be that God would raise up faithful preachers and people who would proclaim His Word across this land. Pray for this generation of young men that God will call and shape and send. Pray for pastors everywhere. Pray for lay people, for, for Christians to be bold. There's only one solution, and that's the truth, the truth by which God saves, by which God sanctifies. And if this nation will respond and listen to His truth, God will open the floodgates. And we might be the greatest recovery story in history, but there's no other way than that people listen to me and walk in my ways. It's not going to happen if there's a famine of the hearing of the Word of God. Pray that the Word, as Paul said, would have free course and that it would run with all its power across this land, with all its beauty and magnificence, all its power and grace, that people would hear and believe and be saved and be obedient. All that to the glory of God. I don't know what God's plan is. I just see here what His heart is. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That's the heart of God. Our Father, we thank You for simplifying things as You always do, even in the midst of what is so profound. It all comes down to the truth again. The truth, the truth, the truth, truth. Make us people of the truth. May we trust the truth, unleashing it in all its power, knowing that we, we have no, no other weapon but the sword, and it is sharper than any other. So, Lord, we just plead with You that Your Word in all its saving and sanctifying and transforming power would explode across this nation, that the truth would replace the lies that abound everywhere, not for us but for Your own glory. This we ask in the name of our Christ, amen. We trust you're encouraged by what you've just heard. You've been listening to pastor, Bible teacher, and author John MacArthur. John is featured speaker on Grace to You, a daily half-hour radio broadcast. Thanks again for your interest in Grace to You, where each day we're unleashing God's truth, one verse at a time.